back here on Healthy Living. Once again, we're here with Dr. Shelley Ringer and we're talking about breast health. You have taught me well. <laughs> so I say, yes, yes, you have taught me. Let's talk about breast health and things that we can do to be proactive in taking care of ourselves really at any age. Absolutely. And so there are things that we can all do to help prevent breast cancer. And um, it doesn't matter if you're at higher risk, not at higher risk. Um, mm -hmm. And I tell my patients, it's not always what we want to do. It's not fun. It's all the stuff we know we should do. And it is all about taking care of ourselves. Um, so some of the key things are getting enough exercise. Which which looks like what? So it's um, defined as 150 minutes of vigorous activity a week. Which means which, heart rate up. Yeah, exactly. Which if you spread that out, is it such that a bad, bad. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's doable but again with what we talked about earlier yeah. we're usually the last on mm -hmm. our you know agenda to get taken care of i mean especially if you have young children yes. and you're not getting enough sleep the notion of uh trying to actually do exercise do that. in addition to that is extremely difficult but we do know that it makes a difference and sometimes getting up at five o'clock in the morning because you've got to take the kids to school or get right. your dad di breakfast or whatever is not fun no not at all exactly mm -hmm. and the of okay where would I even put exercise into this realm <laughs> the stuff that you can do is you know little things mm -hmm. um, take the stairs instead of taking an elevator that's going to be a little bit of exercise Love it. Um, so every little bit that you can do does make a difference um, if you work a desk job try to get up and walk around mm -hmm. a little bit during a lunch break walk around some it makes it less intimidating doesn't it absolutely and doable yes okay yes, so does. exercise yep. number one so um, eating well again we all know this yeah you know, it is oh, wow. no shock for me to say that eating foods that come off trees or from the ground is better for us than chemical box yeah we all know that <laughs> right um, but again the chemicals taste really good mm -hmm. and they're the easy things to i was just going to say um, and they're grabbable they are they're very grabbable and sometimes i will tell my um, patients and um you know or if for weight loss so it does take a little bit of time but not as much time as you would think is find the healthy vegetables vegetables that you like okay. and prepare them. Cut them up, put them in a little baggie, take them to work with you. That way, when you need that little snack to grab, yes. you have already cut up cucumbers or carrots, or you have a bowl of blueberries, great antioxidants in blueberries, some, you know, some bite walnuts, sized tomatoes, or, okay. exactly. Some oh, walnuts. I love those little cocktail tomatoes. Aren't They're they so wonderful? good. Yes. Yeah, they can be really sweet. Mm -hmm. So the key is preparing those. Um, and so that's what I do, you know, in the morning. It doesn't take me more than five right. minutes. Cut up some cucumber, put it in a baggie. Mm -hmm. Put those tomatoes and some blueberries in a little Tupperware. Take them with me when I get hungry. Of course, my inclination is I lo love a bag of chips. Sure. But if I already have that other food prepared, I kind of feel guilty going exactly. for the chips because that food's going to go to waste. It's interesting because during that during this time, um, I've cooked more than I've ever cooked in my entire life. Sure. And I find that we've been much more healthy and I think a lot of that is I'm just prepping a little bit more and now that I realize it's not that hard to do yes it's a lot of its habit it's easy to go through the drive-thru absolutely drive it is absolutely and when you eat out the portion sizes are usually much larger mm -hmm. than what you would normally do at home okay so exercise yep. and food are you plant-based eater or so um I try to be okay um I am um, mostly vegetarian so okay. I will eat fish once or twice a month maybe, okay and probably more like once. Um, How about your kids? So um, they are mostly. Um, okay. It's kind of funny. So I have two children. They're eight and ten. Mm -hmm. And um, with opinions. Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my eight-year-old is mostly vegetarian. He okay. will every once in a while. So in our home, we're vegetarian. Okay. When we go out, we let them choose whatever they want to eat. And um, interestingly, my eight-year-old tends to prefer the vegetarian meals. My ten-year-old is a carnivore. Okay. You give Period. Him an That's right. To eat meat, and he's absolutely going to eat it. So. So um, I think later on in life, you know, he makes his own choices. He'll, he'll do that. But. My my uh, 16 year old grandson says that he is a vegetarian. Mm -hmm. He's like, I'm a vegetarian. I really like that, except for cheeseburgers. And I'm like, <laughs> uh, 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 yeah, okay. But, but again, every, every little bit matters. And I right. think 
the hard part is, um, and interestingly, I read an article about this the other day. It's this all or none concept. Mm -hmm. And if you get into this all or none concept, you're going to fail. Mm -hmm. But saying I am a vegetarian except for cheeseburgers, you know what? You're doing what you can. Exactly. And that's better than saying, oh, well, I ate a cheeseburger. I fell off the car. Forget exactly. It. Um, it, it still matters. Well, you know, as a, as a therapist, one of the things I've, I always tell all of my patients, we have an 80-20 rule. Mm -hmm. If 80% of the time you're doing what you want to do, yep. and 20% of the time, oops, things happen, that's still a pretty good um, statistic yes. there. So yep. I think that that's, that's, we were just talking about that this morning, Megan, with you, yep. about sometimes perfect isn't a good thing. Exactly, I completely agree with that. And um, uh, our science bears that out too. Oh, interesting. Um, there are some studies and looking at flexitarian um, diets, which is vegetarian, but eating a little bit of meat. Okay. That that has just as much benefits as being vegetarian. So interesting. So absolutely, it doesn't have to be one hundred percent. So exercise, diet. Yep. Sleep. Sleep is very important. That's our restorative time. That's when everything in our body gets restored, including our brain. Mm -hmm. um, I suspect that is the hardest part for most people. There, our society is a go, 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 go. Mm -hmm. And um, to try to fit everything in is extremely difficult. Okay. Um, but I do recommend trying to uh, focus on that. So we as women, again, we're talking about breast health and prevention, if we can. Two things that I think are are what every all of us are hoping we don't bring up um, alcohol yep I was gonna bring that up oh darn it and stress yes Yes. Okay, how do you, tell me a little bit about guidelines for those. So as far as alcohol goes, we have um, studies that show us on a routine basis, even one glass of alcohol daily slightly increases breast cancer risk. Wow. That's not that much. It's one no. glass of wine with dinner. Four ounces. Or exactly. Three, yeah. It's really not that much. But we also have data that shows that um, red wine helps our heart. So I often have women ask me, well, how do I balance that? 80-20. <laughs> and, so and I say, I'm not telling you to completely cut That's it out. That's right. Maybe go to 20% of the time, yeah. Exactly, and that's kind of what mm -hmm. I do tell them. Um, exactly. It's yes. so interesting. So the alcohol, and then stress. I think in this time it's hard not to be stressed or be anxious. Absolutely. But how does stress kind of... I guess work with yep. breast health. So um, stress in our bodies creates a cortisol reaction. And cortisol is a compound in our body that it's, um, you may have also heard it as the fight or flight sort of thing. Okay. And that's what gets your body revved up in case a bear is trying to attack right. you to get you ready to go. Mm -hmm. um, but luckily no bears are attacking us That's anymore. right, we will not be eating. And um, cortisol lowers the immune system. So oh. especially in your cortisol levels, you kind of have this constant anxiety in your cortisol levels are constantly higher, it can lower your immune system. Okay. And we absolutely know that our immune system fights off cancers in our body constantly. Okay. And so if you lower your immune system, it increases your risk of cancer. Now, I do also tell all my patients that it's really hard to lower that stress. Mm -hmm. As you said, right now, we are all living sure. under a certain level of anxiety. We've got a virus going on. We're worried about our health finances for so Correct. many people with jobs. So it's not simple. And mm -hmm. I'm not saying it's a simple thing, um, but unfortunately that does also play into a cancer risk. And, and then tying it all together, Dr. Ringer, from a breast health point of view, going back to mammographies and checkups, Yep. And so we try to control as much as we can. We can't control it all. And as you said, we're not perfect. Nobody ever is. You do what you can. Okay. And then trying to get your mammogram every year so that if something would show up, we find it early, get it taken care of, get you moving on with life without much hassle. What about breast um, checks? Again, a lot of controversy in that too. Oh, really? Although, um, there actually is. Um, mm -hmm. So number one, they used to always recommend that women do their own self-breast exams. Okay. And the US Preventative Task Force a number of years ago actually took away that recommendation. And so what I tell my patients is if you feel comfortable with your breast exam, absolutely keep doing it. Okay. But if um, I see a lot of women who tell me that yeah. I would, um, I'd be here every month if I did my exam every month because I'd feel stuff. And I tell those people, then don't 
don't worry. That's right. Get your mammogram every year, but that's okay. You're not harming yourself. Because that's that stress thing. Exactly. It, okay. Exactly. Um, and then as far as a clinical breast exam, meaning having a physician do an mm -hmm. exam, um, interestingly, that was actually removed too. Okay. Now, I do think it's important. Um, just like um, everybody themselves is, you know, has different levels sure. of doing breast exams, different physicians are, you know, better well, that's than true. doing exams. Makes so, sense. You know, just finding someone who you feel comfortable with and if possible, sticking with the same person year after year for that uh, routine can be helpful too. And why would that be helpful? So if they feel anything, they can make little comments in their notes of, okay, they were a little bit lumpy or glandular right. in one spot and they can compare it year to year and you're not having someone recreate the wheel every single year. It is amazing to talk to you and every single time we do this, I learn so much. Plus, I think you make it real for all of us and not so um, intimidating. Again, Dr. Shelley Ringer, thank you for joining us. We want to thank all of you for joining us here on Healthy Living. Have a great week. Be safe. Bye-bye.